Hello everybody, this is what we're painting today. Rooster Cafe with my vibrant, beautiful rooster who I just love. And today we are working with new paints. We're working with premium tube acrylic paints. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to love this project. It is a fast one. It's going to teach you some good stroke work. I can't wait to paint it with you. Let's get started. So I'm going to show you how to do the background for this project two ways. I'm going to show you how to paint it if you just want to apply paint and go. And I'm going to show you how to decoupage paper on it. So I my multi-purpose sealer is completely dry and I have lightly sanded it with a very super fine sanding pad. You can use a brown paper sack. We'll do the same thing. And so I've cleaned my artist sponge. It's still damp. I am going to pick up some black paint. I'm going to show you how to do the painted background first. So I'm just going to apply black paint all over the whole surface. You can use a two inch foam roller as well. But I already had this out using it to apply my decoupage, my um, multi-purpose sealer. So we're going to give it two really good coats, nice smooth coats. We're going to also do the edges. So just go along with your sponge and take care of the edges as well. And two coats on. Let each coat dry in between. It will dry fairly quickly when you apply it with a sponge because um, you put on thinner coats. You don't have you know paint built up anywhere. So nice thin coats is what you put on here so it will dry very very quickly so I'm gonna get mine dry apply a second coat and then we'll come back and show you how to do the background okay I've got my paint all dry if it feels like it's a little rough it shouldn't if you're painting on masonite but if it does just lightly sand it with a brown paper bag to kind of get that smoothness back to it so for the painted side now I'm just showing you I'm just demoing the painted side and then I'll go to the other side for the decoupage. Um, we're going to stencil on the back. Now you can use any kind of stencil that you like. I'm going to show you three options, but any stencil that you have on hand that you like, that you think will go well with what you're painting, that's what you should use. So all of these stencils that I'm going to show you came from Creative Arts Lifestyle. Um, this one is uh, the... Um, Paris postage stencil. This is an 11 by 11 stencil that she carries on her website. I really like this one. This one is a lot of fun. So this is one you can use on there. Um, another option also from her website. This is Patricia Rawlinson's website. So if you just type her name in the search bar, her website will come up. Um, is this, uh, this is all roads lead to Rome and you could put several different things on here going different directions and things and that would be super fun and then another option is this one is the background word stencils um, it's got like kitchen related things and since uh, mine has a cafe theme this is the one that I'm going to use here and it will fit nicely cover it will cover the whole um, surface and then I can just stencil all these words into the background so let me grab it out of here and I'm just gonna lay it right here on top of my stencil I'm not gonna worry about um, taping it down I don't, I don't think I need to tape it down so if you're doing the stencil on the painted background um, bleach sand is the color that we're going to use because it's going to mimic the paper that I'm using the closest I'm going to use a makeup sponge. Now these are not absorbent, so you don't want to get a whole lot of paint on the end of it at one time. Uh, what you want to do is pull a little bit out over here and then tap it to disperse it on the sponge so that you don't have a whole lot of buildup on there. And if you feel like where you're working, loading it, there's still a lot, then move away from it and offload a little bit over here. Okay? So when you use this sponge, 
up and down, straight up and down motion. Don't twist it or, or do anything like this, like if you had a, a stencil brush. It's different when you use this. So we're just going to go in a straight up and down motion and put this whole stencil in our background. And if you do like a, um, where some letters are really dark and some letters aren't, that's really cool because it will give it a more weathered look, which is how the paper is that I'm, I'm going to be using. So if you lightly tap on some and then tap a little bit harder on other letters, like I didn't tap, you're not even in camera shot, but let me wide angle out here a little bit. This one here, I didn't tap very hard, so I can still see the black. So maybe the letter beside it, the E here, I think I might want it to be just a touch darker. So that's how you can get that hit and miss kind of aged look on your design. Let's see how it's looking. Oh, that's looking really good, really good. So we just wanna work this stencil however, whatever stencil you're using, however you like it. Um, a lot of it's going to be covered up in the background, so, you know, don't worry if it's... So I'm going to tap a little bit lighter on some areas and just a little bit harder. I don't want to push the sponge. I just want to tap a little bit harder, but don't push it because you don't want any paint to go underneath your, your stencil. So let's see how this looks. Oh, that's looking really good. I like that a lot. All right, let's work the rest of the way down. Oh, I've got some letters over there I need to, to do as well. Along this edge, part of these letters show. Straight up and down. And then this, once your, your stencil dries on this side, it will be ready for you to apply your pattern lines and get ready to paint. I'll make a couple darker areas over here. This should be a very easy process. If you are getting a lot of paint on the top of your stencil, then you've got too much on your sponge. So just really concentrate on how you're loading your uh, sponge. see if I want to add any more paint on any letters. I think that looks really good. Some I made dark, some I didn't. I'm going to do it the opposite direction. See how it looks here. That looks pretty good. I like it. So I'm just going to lift the stencil straight up and I will take it straight to my sink. I'm going to apply some hand sanitizer, squirt some all over there and just kind of rub it onto the stencil. And you can use a extremely soft toothbrush to, as it's running under warm water or cold water, warm water I think works best, then just gently rub the toothbrush on the stencil as you're cleaning it. It will come right off. No problems whatsoever. Um, you can, if you're just doing like one word on a stencil, you could use like a baby wipe to clean it off. So. I've had stencils that I've had paint on for many, many years and have still been able to get it off with the hand sanitizer. So now with your sponge, you don't want to throw this sponge away. This sponge is usable for many, many more uses. So I let it dry and then I come back once it's dry, but I'll just do it while it's damp here, and cut it, the painted part, the part that has the paint. It's easier to do when it's, when it's dry because 
that hard part will, will slice through a little bit easier. And then you've got a clean sponge ready to go for whatever you need to use it for again. So, um, good tip for your sponge there. So now this, this side is done. If you want to go this direction with your surface, this is an easy way to go. But I want to apply some paper. And I have this sheet of paper, and I don't know how long I've had it. I'm pretty sure I got it at Hobby Lobby. The brand of this paper, um, well, Prima Marketing Incorporative, Incorporated, uh, Printery Collection, negative, it says. Pretty sure I got it at Hobby Lobby. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what it says down here. Go across, and there is the code number for it. If you want to search for it by the code number or contact the company, it's Prima Marketing Inc. Dot com. I put a line through it so you can't really read it. So if, if you want to try and contact them to get this exact piece of paper, because I don't know how long I've had it, um, but I know I did get it at Hobby Lobby. So I don't think I've had this one a super long time. They may still have it there. Uh, scrapbooking paper rotates out quite frequently. So um, one paper you might see there one week and you go back the next week and it's gone because they've rotated it out and, and brought in a new paper. So all I did was put my board on here and I traced around it. This had a little bit of aged edge on the bottom which I kinda like but I wasn't sure this, this white line that I wanted on there. So I brought my um, line up a little bit so I, when I laid this on here I brought it up a little bit so I could cut that white edge off and then just lined it up over there and, and pencil marked around it. So I'm going to go off camera and get this cut out and we'll come back and show you how to adhere it on here. Okay I've got it all cut out. I'm ready to adhere it to my board. So this is the product that I like to use, the decoupage medium from Deco Art. Okay this is specifically for paper and then this is for most anything else. They have an outdoor one as well. Um, but I'm going to use the paper one. I just like it the best. They're both great products. This one just happens to be a favorite of mine. So I am going to dump some out on a foam plate. Oop. Or a lot. <laughs> I've got my dampened artist sponge. I washed the black paint out of it. Now I've got it ready to go for my um, decoupage medium here. And I am going to apply it with this sponge. And get a nice coat. Make sure you get your edges well. You want to make sure that your paper is stuck everywhere on here. Make sure I really got my edges. I don't want a bunch of it oozing out around the edges, but I, I do want to make sure there's plenty on there. Okay, I'm going to flip this paper over and apply some of this on the back of this. Now you could just take it straight to your project and put it right on there, your surface. And I'm going to put some on the back. This might help keep it from buckling a little bit, I hope. Because papers can tend to do that. Okay, and I'm just going to line up the corner here. And the corner here. Now, because I have glue on both parts of this, it is going to stick fast. So I'm not going to have a whole lot of maneuvering time. So. this edge. It's okay if it goes past on the top or the bottom a little bit. We can trim that off. We just want to make sure the whole surface is covered. So I'm going to take, this is just a, a scraping tool uh, that you use in the kitchen. 
and I am just going to use this to press down my paper well. Don't want any air bubbles in there. So feel it for bubbles and try to push them out. I want my edges to be good. Anything that hangs over we can trim off. You can use a brayer if you have a brayer, a braying tool. Um, if, you, if you do scrapbooking and have a braying tool, you just need something that you can rub the paper down with without it gouging the paper and possibly tearing it. You can take your hand over it and you can feel for bubbles. And this feels pretty good. Got one right there. Push that out. Okay, so now we're going to let this dry completely. A little bubble there. And then we're going to come back and trim the edges off. Well, let's see. Let's see if I have to seal the paper first. I can go ahead and put a coat on the top of this since I've got all my bubbles out. If after it dries you have a bubble, just take a little pin and poke a hole in that bubble and lightly dampen your finger and you can push it out. I want to find my holes up here for hanging it. Where are they? There's one. So I'm just going to take a toothpick, push that toothpick in there and kind of rotate it around that circle. And then the other one over here. have those holes ready for when we need to add our hanger and it will glue right down to where it needs to be. I'm going to put a quick coat on the top and smooth it out and let it dry. You can choose not to put a coat on here if you don't want to. It's up to you. I have done lots of projects in the past where I did not put this on the top. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to let that get dry. I'm going to smooth that out a little bit. I'm using the opposite side of my sponge here. Smooth that out just a little bit. It was a little bit thicker up there than what I wanted. I don't want it pooling on here. Okay, so now this is going to get dry. And then I can get my pattern. Well, before I put my pattern on, I'll come back and show you how to trim the edges up. Okay, I do want to give you another tip here. Um, if you pushed glue out along the edges, you want to take a damp brush and remove that glue because it will make it harder to remove any paper that's along the edge there. Just if there's a lot of buildup. If it's just a tiny bit, don't worry too much about it. But I think we've got some buildup on there. We definitely want to remove any buildup of a lot of glue. So I'm just using a damp brush and going just right along there and that side looks good. So I didn't have too much oozing out over. If you, if you put too much on your surface then it probably will ooze over. So just be prepared for that and clean up as best you can. Okay, now I'm going to let it get dry. The top is already dry. I've got to let the paper get dry enough to it that it's adhered to it before I start sanding off the edges. Alright, my surface is dry enough for me to work on removing the paper that's hanging off the edge. Now, I don't have a whole lot hanging off. I've got some here at the top, just a tiny bit on this edge, and then at the bottom. This side is good. So, what I'm going to do is take a damp brush, and I'm going to dampen the paper. I'm going to dampen it on both edges. Kind of let the paper, the water kind of settle in there. Then I'm just going to take an emery board and add a downward 
motion. I think I need to replace this emery board. Let me get one that's not quite beat up. You can buy these packages of emery boards at just about any place. And then we'll just sand that off. The glue still feels a little bit tacky there on that edge. I'll put a little bit more water on there. I've got enough moisture on there and it's soaked into the paper. It should come off very, very easily. I should have to do little work just like that. That's glue. And that's a little bit of paper that's stuck there. And then just kind of buff it out very easily. You don't want to scrub very hard. You'll tear your paper and you'll remove the paint that you worked so hard to put on the edges. So we're just removing the little bit that hangs over. It's a very easy, simple process. Okay, I'm going to finish up the other ones. We're going to come back and get our pattern on here. Okay, my paper's all dry. I did go ahead and transfer some of my lines on here, but it might not matter in a moment because I'm going to add some aging onto this paper now. I really like the way that it looks here, but I want it to be a little bit um, more into the background. So I'm going to apply some of this uh, vintage effects wash. This is white over my paper. So I've just got a large brush here. And I'm just going to, maybe not quite that much, so I'll get a little bit of water in my brush. I'm just going to brush this over. Now, if you don't have this Vintage Effects wash, I really, really like it. But if you don't have it, then um, you can get some white with some glazing medium. If you don't want to do this on yours, you do not have to do it. So I'm going to apply a nice coat on here, and then I'm going to wipe it back just a little bit with a paper towel. Kind of a hit and miss thing. I don't want to take it all off. I just want to take it down just a little bit. Just mute that paper just a little bit. I can still see my pattern lines on here. So all I've transferred on is the shape of the body of the rooster and the wording up here. Kind of and put a, a mark where the the tail feathers will start coming out. So I'm going to let this dry. I think I can flip it over and do the other side where I did the painted side to show you how it will look on here. I'm thinning this down with some water. This uh, Vintage Effects wash. I thought about using an orange on here for a more rust colored look, but then I changed my mind. So. I'm just going to very quickly brush this very wet. I've got plenty of water mixed in with it to lighten it up. Now I'll take my paper towel and do my hit and miss kind of thing. I'll remove some of it. You can remove more in like, let's say I want it to still be a little dark through there. I might remove a little bit more of the of the wash. But this is just going to age it down a little bit more. Wipe it off my edges. So it's just going to take it down a little bit more. Get my fingerprint off of there. And if I wanted it even more taken down, I can just take my paper towel and go like that and remove a little bit more of it. Just kind of give it a, an aged look back in there. And that's going to make it a little bit more fun. Again, with this one, I've transferred my lines on here. Okay. It's a very easy step there, putting the vintage wash on there. 
So now to get our, um, I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to have to undercoat everything because we're painting on top of black and a lot of times some of the paints that I choose are not opaque enough to cover up that black. So we're going to undercoat our elements with some bleach sand or you can use buttermilk or light buttermilk. But bleach sand is what I have because that's what I uh, stenciled this side with. So I might as well just continue to use a color that I've already used. Okay, so on the painted background, I've done my undercoating on my chicken as, as far as I want to go for now. So I'm going to show you how I did this on this side. Okay, so I'm using a filbert brush. This is a six filbert brush and the uh, bleach sand. And we're just going to, uh, on the wattle and the, um, the comb, we can just kind of fill it in. You don't have to be perfect about this. You know, you can leave some black showing through. I'll probably try and want to get a little bit more coverage than what I just put on there. I've got a little bit of water in my brush, so it kind of thin my paint down. Now you can go to a small round brush here if you want. And I'm going to paint the eye in, but it's not going to matter too much right now because we'll come back in and, and put that in. So I'm painting each, each section in on its own. And just filling in. Now as we start here on the feather areas, I'm going to just do loose pulling strokes. I am on the very chisel edge of the brush and I'm going to just pull some strokes. We can begin shaping the back here. We don't want thick paint here, so don't um, get buildup of paint. Okay, so that gets that area kind of defined. I'm going to kind of flip it around here. And I'm going to start down here on the breast area and just do some choppy little strokes through here. I'm still on the chisel edge of the brush. I'm not laying my brush flat like this. I'm on the chisel edge, just pulling, kind of almost dry brushing some strokes on here. Okay, so that kind of forms the breast area. Then I've got this, this one wing that's back here, so I want to, the bottom part of the, if the wing was stretched out, this would be the out, far outside edge of the wing. So we're just going to stroke that in. To about there. And then this is the upper part of the wing here. And um, I am going to do some much bigger strokes here and kind of shape that. And we'll bring it all the way up. When we, when we paint this in here, we'll probably paint it in last so that it will lay over the wings. And then down here on the legs, we're just going to tap in. And again, you can go to a smaller brush if you prefer. 
keep those kind of, they're almost egg-shaped areas here at the tops of the legs. And then the legs themselves, you can just stay on the chisel edge or go to a smaller round brush. Whatever you feel comfortable using, that's what I want you to do. You don't have to use the same brush I use if you don't feel comfortable using that style of brush or that size of brush. Okay, so that is all of our undercoating. Okay, we can go up and do the letters, the, the fat parts of the letters as well. Maybe the whole letter. We better hold off on the letters because I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. And then all of our tail feathers and our um, saddle feathers that come over this way we'll do after we get all of this part painted in. We'll have to undercoat them with this as well, but we'll do that after we get all of this painted in. So that's your undercoating. Um, right there for your bird. Now we're going to get ready to add some color to it. Okay, so I did decide that I'm going to need to undercoat my letters because the color that I want to put on the letters is a little bit more of a transparent color. So we are just going to lightly go over these with the buttermilk. If you have a stencil that you really like, one that says rooster and maybe one that has the word cafe on it. Like this one has the word cafe. Has it there. I can't remember if it had it anywhere else. Let me take a look. It ha has cafe down here. It's pretty big though. You could stencil the words rooster and cafe on here. <clears throat> So I'll go off camera and get this done. I'm just using a small round brush. A, let's see, this is a one round. I'm staying up on the very tip. I have some water added to my brush so that it will flow off of the tip nicely. You don't want too much water that it will turn it transparent. Um, but you need it to be a little bit thinner. That way you can stay up on the tip and the paint will just come right off. You won't have to um, push on your brush. That's when you um, struggle with lettering is when you start pushing on the brush trying to get the paint where you want it to go and the brush doesn't is not very cooperative when you do it that way. So I'll just finish up the word rooster here. I'll go off camera and do the word cafe. And then I think I'm going to come back. I'm going to go ahead and put the tail feathers and the um, saddle feathers undercoating on because we can always paint right over the undercoating and then come back and put our colors on top. Then we'll have all of our undercoating done. You don't want thick paint here when you're when you're doing your undercoating. You want some nice smooth paint. That's why having a little bit of water in it, staying up on your tip, just outline the letters and then fill in the areas that are larger. I'll go off camera and finish this. So let me show you about the um, the tail feathers and the uh, let's come over here the saddle feathers. So we're still using our filbert brush. So far, we've only used two brushes, and we probably won't use much more than these two brushes. Maybe an additional one or two. So this will be a 
a minimal brush project, which is always nice. Get the water off my ferrule. So I'm going to go ahead and pull some feathers this way for the saddle feathers. So as we paint in our colors on here, we'll kind of be able to see where our, our saddle feathers are going. And then your tail feathers, you can be as creative with your tail feathers here as you like. Um, you can just do, uh, let me grab a piece of paper here to paint on. <clears throat> So you can just do um, pulling strokes and pull like this. Well, let me get a darker color because you can't see that. You can do pulling strokes like this up on the chisel edge and pull your feathers out like this. And get them how you like them. Or you can have the brush flat and pull some bigger feathers like this and create some, some thicker feathers and you can go in here in between these and fill in some of these filler feathers. So really that is a complete option for you. I think um, I was going to just do the stroke ones because they're very easy, but I think I'm going to do the ones where my brush is a little more flat. So I'm going to be pulling right here, which would be about where the butt of this rooster would be. So I have my brush flat here, and I'm pulling a feather up, and I'm turning my brush onto its chisel edge and then just coming over onto the chisel. And then letting it just disappear and we'll, we'll have a few stray little feathers up here. And uh, we'll probably do our tail feathers first so that we can um, do our saddle feathers last. Just go in here and pull some feathers. And just create some, however, is appeals to you. So again, we're starting out with it flat and then turning it on its chisel edge and just rotating the brush a little bit and getting a nice bend in our tail feathers. I think we need another one here. This time I'm going to stay on the chisel edge. And I'll cover that up. And I think I'll make his saddle feathers come a little bit more back this way. Kind of fill him in just a little bit. I want some more feathers coming off of this, so I'm going to fill in. I'm on the very chisel edge of the brush, just stroking them in here. Now, don't worry when we start to add in our other our color on top of this, you're not necessarily going to have to worry about following each exact feather. Um, we'll just be laying color on top. This is just so that some of some of our colors are a little more transparent, and uh, we just want to make sure we we get the brightness of our colors on here. And I think I'll kind 
to stroke in some here. This is on the chisel edge. Okay, I think that's pretty good for our undercoating. Okay, now when you do do your undercoating, I do want you to do these choppy little strokes. I don't want you to just come in here and brush it in nice and smooth and fill it in. I want you to stay choppy with your strokes so that we can kind of retain some of that texture underneath. And it kind of helps guide us as we put our top colors on to know where we want to go. So, let me get my paints gathered up and we are going to get going on this guy. He is going to be bright and vibrant and gorgeous. You are just going to fall in love with this little rooster. Okay, I decided to come back and show you how I was going to paint in Cafe. Because it is a more cursive font, um, it requires a little bit more effort than just outlining and filling in these like these block letters. Now I do have a video on my YouTube channel that shows how to do lettering and this is just a pressure and release type of lettering. So um, let me get some different color paint here on my brush. So like this C here, like out here on this area it's very thin and then it gets fatter here so we'll start on the very tip of the brush coming and then as it gets fatter we're going to give more pressure as we go down following that letter and then it gets let it gets thinner so we're going to come up on the chisel edge right there okay this is pressure and release i'm missing a line on my letter here Let me see what line I'm missing. Okay, I was missing this little line here. I couldn't tell where my letter was supposed to go. So again, this part of the letter right here will probably start up about here. We'll be up on the tip. I'm going to give it some pressure. Come down where that one ended and come around. You will have a line to follow. I don't have a line to follow, so I'm kind of making it up here. All right, so then the top part of the letter is going to be maybe if I can get my paint the right consistency you have to have good flow with your paint here it's going to be fatter here and then come and join up on the very tip and up and join that one okay and this part here will come all the way around and connect to the C of course this isn't drawn on here so nothing is as it should be our C has a little ball on the end of it here so I'm starting up on the very tip of my brush, very, very tip. I'm starting to get pressure, laying the brush flat. Pressure, 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 follow the shape. Come up on the tip, come up on the tip, up on the tip, 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 tip. There we go. And we make our C. So it is simply a pressure and release. Pressure and release. Release is when you come back up to the tip of the brush. Pressure is when you give more pressure on the brush to flatten the bristles. Depending on how wide of an area you're feeling, your painting in will depend on how much pressure you need. So when I give pressure, my bristles are down. They're not completely flat yet. This is completely flat. I don't usually have it completely flat when I'm doing lettering. So pressure, bristles are down and flat. Release, I'm up on the tip. Pressure, release, pressure, release. And that's how you get up on the tip. Pressure, release. And on paper it's a little hard because your paint wants to... Pressure, and no paint left to release. Pressure, release. Pressure, release. Okay? Just, it just takes some practice. So, um, you know, get you some paper. You don't even have to have, 
get like a dark card stock and you can just do it with water. You don't have to do it with paint. Just practice the pressure and release with your brush. Okay, let's get ready to start laying in some color on our little rooster here. Now, um, roosters, I found out as I research roosters, are so extremely different. <laughs> I had no idea. And um, they are just all different colors. It's just amazing. I was just really amazed at the difference in all of the roosters. So when I drew mine out, I kind of took parts from different kind of roosters. So my rooster is kind of a little freak of nature, but I think he's going to be a cute cute rooster. So the paints we're using, because it's been a couple of days since I worked on this project, so I don't know exactly what I said in my last videos, is the Deco Art Premium Acrylic Paints. You can convert to just the bottled paints if you want to. Use whatever colors appeal to you in your rooster, because after all, there's no wrong colors you can put in a rooster as far as I'm concerned. So um, this is what we're going to be using to um, paint in our rooster. Okay, we're going back to our six uh, filbert brush. And we're going to paint in... Let me get the moisture out of my brush here. We're going to paint in some uh, color here. Um, I think I'll start here on the legs. These feathers here on the legs. And I'm going to use a, uh, the one round brush that we used earlier. And I just want to start like dabbing. Dabbing. Just dibby dab. Follow that shape with some black paint. They're not going to stay black. We just kind of want this to be like our shadow color underneath. And then we've got one here. Now you can go straight into colors if you want to um, do some bright, fun, bold colors. Then just go start grabbing some colors that you like and start painting them in. Because you're not going to go wrong. Okay, so that was pretty easy, huh? I think this is going to be a pretty easy project. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Okay, so these are his chest feathers here, and they're eventually going to be like a teal color, but I want the black under there first. So we're just going to still have too much water in my brush here. We're just going to start, just like we put the undercoating in, stroking. And I know we painted our background black, and you're thinking, we painted it black, then we painted it bleach sand, now we're painting it black again. Well, yeah, we still needed the undercoating under here because we don't want to have to, you know, work so hard at it and put a bazillion layers of black paint to get it where we need it to be because if you're using the regular acrylic paints, you probably don't have to undercoat the black areas. The red areas you definitely need to undercoat. So just keep stroking those feathers all the way up here. I'm going to go up into that just a little bit because I'll probably bring that down longer. Okay. We're also going to paint the tail feathers in with this black. So just follow your, your shapes as best you can. No need to, to worry about being perfect by following these. You're just, you're just putting some color in here. We're coming back to put some bright colors on top of these feathers. But we needed all of this underneath here first. And we want to put this in because um, our saddle feathers will be kind of over this. So... And it's okay if you don't cover everything, just put some paint in there. We will define these as we add color on top, so you don't have to get too worried about it. Okay, I think that's, that's probably good enough right there for our black feathers. Well, I might put a little bit more down here. It looks like it needs to have a little bit going on here. 
Okay, so still pretty easy, I think. Yeah, I think you're going to love this project. So, um, our next color that I want to put in, we're going to add some uh, oranges and some greens in here and some golds. So, I am going to put out on my palette um, Pyro Red, Vermilion Hue, Cadmium Yellow, or Cadmium Orange Hue. I'm also going to put out some yellow oxide and some cadmium yellow hue. So these are the colors we're going to use for up in here and on this wing. And this wing I haven't decided yet. I'm going to have to paint it first. Um, I think I'm going to use the color, that same color on here. I think we'll make this one more of the yellow and this area more red and this area more yellow. So. That's my thought process on it. How it turns out could be completely different. I also wanted to tell you, um, instead of opening these lids, because it squirts out way too much paint for me, just take the lid off. You have a little bit more control of how much paint you squirt out. I know I squirted so much out the other day, I just felt like I wasted a quarter of the tube. So just take the whole lid off and squirt some out. Because it takes very little paint. You know, and if you need more, it's it's easy to go grab some more. So, let me get these colors out on my palette here. The red we will also be using up here on the wattle, and I had no idea wattles could be so different. <laughs> I just thought I thought all rooster wattles look the same, but I did not grow up on a farm. Although I felt like I lived in the country, we didn't have a farm. So, all right, <clears throat> let's get going here. So I think I'll go in first and paint in my um, red up here. So this is this can just be kind of fill in the red, and you'll need a couple of coats. This red is a little bit on the transparent side, but it is such a bright, pretty red. I just love it. So just follow your pattern, your, your undercoating that you painted there. And I'm not sure if that black's dry, so I don't want to lay my arm in it. I'm going to go around the head so I can retain my shape there. But all of this, even where the eye is, will be red. Not the beak. We don't want to paint the beak in. Just about lost it there. Okay, so that's a pretty easy little thing here. You know what? I think I might change my mind and paint this area green, maybe. And this too, red and orange. So, all right. So... I am going to pick up some of the uh, yellow oxide. Now this color is not very bright, but I want to get some color in here that I can brighten up. So this is the yellow oxide. Okay, got some tail feathers there I missed. So we're going to bring it up to this this wing right here. This this part of the the wing. So like this is the upper part of the wing, which the feathers on it are usually a separate, well the ones that I looked at were a separate color, than the tip of the wing. This is the tip of the wing. And then we have our saddle feathers that come over, don't I sound really smart, saddle feathers, you know. Of course I had to look things up because I don't know nothing about no chickens or roosters. So there you go. And I'm kind of feeling goofy today because 
I have allergies and I am so tired because I didn't sleep and uh, I just feel like I'm just a goofball today. Okay, where am I going? All right, let's add some oranges in here. Pick up whatever color you want. I want you to just, I just want you to pick and choose any colors that you want to put in your rooster and be creative with him. Okay, I'm getting way ahead of myself here. <laughs> Told you I was a little loopy. Okay, so I do want to finish out some of the black before we move on because it's under everything else. Um, so I've got cobalt teal hue and cerulean blue. I also have out, but I'm not sure that I'm going to use it, primary sien. So I know for sure I'm going to use cobalt teal hue and cerulean hue. So I'm going to start picking up those colors randomly together. Let me do my little legs down here and put some color on top of them. Dibby dabby. I've just picked up both of those colors and just dib dab dib dab. A little dab will do ya. And you do not have to cover up all of your black. It's best if you don't. If you leave some of that poking through in some random areas. Okay. So now let's go over to our chest feathers. And again, I'm just kind of picking up some random colors here. I really like that uh, cobalt teal hue. It's a, it's a beautiful color. I let my feathers start getting a little bit longer through here. Not so short and choppy. Even though we made the black under there choppy, we don't have to make our top layer of feathers choppy. I think I'll get a little bit of white out. Uh, titanium white. And um, I'm going to add a little bit of white to this cobalt teal hue here. And uh, I'm just going to a little bit on my brush, very, very little. And maybe just a tad too much, so I'll wipe it off. And we'll lighten up as we come up here. A bit more white. Oh, he's looking mighty fine. Mighty fine. Now we're going to go over here to our tail feathers and do the same thing with those two blues. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of both in my brush. begin going over my feathers. Well, this is where you want to try and have a little bit more control with your shape. How fun is this? And this paint is just so much. It, it's so smooth. It's just a pleasure to paint with. All right, I'm going to start adding a little bit of white on here. Maybe not so much down in there. my darker blues and I've not cleaned my brush one time I've just gone right into whatever color that of paint that I need I go right into it and just 
I'm on the chisel edge except when I'm up here and I need my brush to be flat to get those fatter flatter areas but as I come down the tail here I am on the chisel edge Come back and stroke in those yellows. See, I shouldn't have put them in yet. All right, back to my white. I want some more white in here. I'm just tipping my brush into some white, just very little. And I think I will come back and add maybe just a stroke or two of black back in here. Let's see if I'm even going to like that. I might not like it after I put it in here. Really up on the chisel edge, just barely letting that brush glide through there. Just barely letting it tickle. So it's just leaving a few little strokes in there. Very chisel edge of the brush. Okay, I need to come out here with a little bit. What a handsome little guy he is. All right, I am going to clean my brush and go get some just white. Make sure you get all the moisture out of your brush up on the chisel edge. And we'll just add some brighter little highlights on here. I'm going to come back in and now and restroke that yellow. Because I want a little bit of that yellow to be on top there. It might not show up on top of that blue. forget to come down here and add just a little bit of this lighter color. That's where the highlight highlight would be on their legs here. And um, if you feel like the chest needs lightening up, then um, put a little bit of one of the blues on your brush and then go into some white. I've blended it together on my brush. Now I'm just going to tip into the white. And like out here on this outer edge, we might want to get some lighter ones. The highlight out there on the chest. Don't cover everything up. I don't want to cover the leg. That leg comes up there, the chest. It's right there. We can kind of brighten that up. A little bit of brightness is always good. I think I will add a few strokes of just white. Right there. And I think that makes a huge difference. I'm puttering and putzing around here. There's going to be some of these that are going to be getting the light here, so I'm going to add a little bit on here. Okay, I think 
that that improved his look quite a bit. All right, let's get ready to work on the wings. The the wing, only one wing. Okay, let's zoom in here. Um, while we have this color out, I'm going to take a small round brush and go ahead and paint the beak in with that um, yellow ochre. And we'll go ahead and paint the feet in. Might as well use this color every place that we need it while we have it on our palette. what color I plan on painting the feet here. line drawing out because I let me see how I drew these in here. Okay. I have this little claw back here. down this way. Call back there. And then we've got this fat one here. Alright, that looks pretty good. Another quick coat up here on the beak. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've got um, this color down here. And I'm going to switch to my four filbert. And I'm going to load my brush with a little bit of that color, which is the yellow oxide. And then I'm just going to wipe it on my paper towel to remove most of it. I want a dirty brush into my next color. And I'm going to go into some orange. See if I'm going to like this. I'm not sure I'm going to like it. So we are going to give it a shot here. And begin pulling some this color. This color might be just a little bit too transparent for me. So let me grab some vermilion. Vermilion hue. It's an orangey red. It's much more opaque. some of those in there. I'm going to go back into my yellow. Just dirty brush right into it. This feather kind of comes to a point down here. Alright, we're going to have to get some other colors in here to reshape some of that. Alright, so I picked up some <laughs> cad yellow hue now. I'm going to put it on top of that orange. That orange was just not working for me. I mean, I kind of like it as an undercoat under that, but not really working. 
All right, wipe my brush off. I'm going to load back into the vermilion, uh, the cadmium yellow hue, and then go into some white. And then we'll start making some lighter yellow feathers in here. And then we're going to go into a more white. And these will be pretty light up through here. And that kind of gets a gradation of color. So um, that worked out pretty good because our original color gave us a good foundation to do that. So I took, let me just reiterate what I just did. I took the yellow oxide, which is this color, loaded my brush, wiped it out. Then I started to go into this color, but did not like it. This is the cadmium orange hue didn't like it so I wiped my brush off I never washed my brush and then I went into some vermilion and it kind of mixed with the um, gold that was on my brush and that's down here okay and then um, I wiped my brush off I went into what did I go I went back into this and added this to it and did a little bit through here and then I went just into this and added white. I added this white to it because this white was not quite working. So I added just white. So whatever white that you have, just add a little bit to your cadmium yellow hue and you'll get a little lighter color. And then um, wipe your brush off and pick up a little bit more white and blend it on your brush and get that final little layer there. And that's going to give us a nice, beautiful layer. And I think we're going to use these same colors up here in the neck area. So um, we are going to base it in with that yellow oxide. And we're going to start up here. So let's just stroke some of this yellow oxide in here over our undercoating. I have to come back in and repaint the the red on the wattle there. Right, we'll go right there over that blue. And bring it down. And I don't think we're going to go any farther than that because actually I need to paint this area in before I can finish that area. So we're going to move to the wing here and paint the wing in. All right, I think I've decided on a color for these feathers, or hopefully I have. Okay, so I, I had this green, but I didn't like it. It's too transparent. So I decided just to get some of the blue out that we used in the tail feather. I mix a little bit of the cadmium yellow hue in, into it, and this color is cerulean blue, and make this beautiful green right here. And I think that's what we're going to start stroking our feathers in with here. So we're just going to start down here and begin stroking. I might pick up a little bit of that gold and stroke along the front here. Or the cad hue, either one. I think the cad hue light I like a little bit better. into our green. Uh, we can mix a little bit of that darker green in there. The one that was a little transparent, I'm mixing it with the, the green that's in my brush. Remember to stay up on the chisel edge of your brush and stroke these in all the way up to the, the neck here. And we'll cover that up when we get to the neck. Um, let's see if we can make a little bit more of a blue-green. So I'm going to mix a little bit of, of the cerulean blue into my brush. And work that color up. 
more blue. Make almost a teal color here. And we'll just keep working our way up. Now we're not going to see a lot of these feathers right here. So we could actually probably stop about here. With our colors going from a, a yellow to a lighter green, or darker green, I guess I should say. Uh, I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to go into that cadmium yellow, and I want to stroke some of this in a little bit everywhere. I have not washed my brush yet. wipe my brush off and go into that cerulean blue and stroke some of that in here we've got some real pretty colors going on in that feather in those feathers so we're gonna leave that right where it's at because our saddle feathers are gonna come over that and so we'll end up not seeing a lot of I mean there's no point in putting paint there that we're just gonna go in and cover up so um, I think I will put a little bit I'm gonna wash my brush and just dab in a little bit of yellow ochre just in case our saddle feathers don't cover up like I would like I don't want it to be white underneath there, so just a little bit of, of that yellow oxide right there. Okay, let's work up here on the neck feathers, and I'm going to load my brush with the Pyrrole Red, which is the color we painted all this stuff in, and we're just going to start. I'm, I've gone down to a, a 4 filbert, and we're just going to stroke like this. Okay, I'm going to wipe my brush off and go into some of the vermilion and begin some strokes of this. Put a few down here. need to bring my feathers out a little bit there so I'm going to wipe the brush off and get a little bit of the yellow oxide so I can create the feathers coming out back there a little bit. Now I'm going to let that dry and go over it with the two colors I just put on there. Okay, I'm going to load my brush back up with the vermilion and then wipe it off. Um, I'm going to try some of this orange, cadmium orange hue. It might be too light. Put some of this in here. I still needed to bring that yellow oxide down more. start back up here so I can cover up some of this color that I just added. That was with the red. Wipe it off. Go into the vermilion. Alright, wipe that off. Go into the cadmium orange hue. Alright, we're caught up now. So let's go into our cadmium yellow hue. Actually, no, I wanted to go into the oxide, yellow oxide, and put a few strokes of this in here. We want our colors to come gradually. So now I'll go into the yellow oxide, or the, the, <laughs> can't even think of my colors, cadmium yellow. And we'll work this down in here. Now 
I'm going to wipe my brush off, pick up a little bit of white, and we'll finish out with some white here, it's, which is mixing in with my yellow, so it's making it not super bright. my brush out. I'm going to pick up at um, vermil yeah, vermilion and I'm going to mix some white in with it to make a really bright orange color. It's almost too peachy. i add a little yellow to it. I want a little lighter color to go on top here. It's almost a peachy orange, so don't get it too peachy. But it's going to give us just a little bit of a color change there, I think. And you can always go back in, too much paint on my brush, and anywhere where you feel like you've lost some of your color, like I feel like I lost some of that orange, that vermilion. I'm going to put some of that back in. Let's put some of that under here because I feel like it needs to be here. You just want to remember to kind of, unless you're trying to get that brighter, brighter color in there, to um, dirty brush into your next color. So I'm adding some cad yellow in here now. I wiped my brush off and just went and picked it up. I might walk this up a little bit and give some highlights up in there. Yeah, I like that much better. Okay, I think that looks pretty good up there. I think I want to come down here and make this a little bit brighter down here. So I'm going to take that red, that pyro red and the vermilion, mix it together on my brush, and come in here and stroke just a few of these. In there. I just want to brighten up that tip a little bit. It's too muted for me. I'm going to put some white strokes in the front here, so I'm going to load up with some uh, cadmium yellow hue and some white and mix that together. I don't want straight white here. And I'll stroke some highlight feathers on here. Just barely tickled it across there, so don't uh, get too crazy with that. Alright, we've got our saddle feathers left to do and um, I'm trying to determine what color I want to go with there. Alright, so I went and looked at rooster pictures because I don't really know much about roosters <laughs> um, to see what colors the saddle feathers tend to be. And the saddle feathers are usually the same color as what the feathers are up here. But you know what? I'm creating this rooster and I'm making him all the colors that I want him to be. So, we are going to first um, put some red in there, I think. We're going to start with red. So, grab your six filbert, load it up with the pyro red, and I think I'll put a little bit of black out. Maybe I'll darken that red just a tiny bit by adding just a little bit of black to it. some red over 
here. I'll get a little bit of black. Make that a really rich red right there. And we're going to start stroking our feathers over. So really just let it flick. Let the brush just go. You're touching down here and then as you're pulling this way you're you're just barely skimming the surface. That's a pretty color. I really like that. It's a little transparent. Reds tend to be a little transparent sometimes, but we're going with it. Give a little bit come in that direction. And we're going to bring it on down. This guy wants to have some beautiful plumage. I'm going to mix a little bit more here. This is going to get our shape of where our feathers are going to go. So we just want to decide. We want to keep it a nice even back there on the back. So don't let it get too wild and crazy. So I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to wipe my brush off and just go into the pyro red. And we're going to stroke this over. much paint there. Don't want globs of paint. Make sure you work it into your, your brush and flatten. Put some of these darker ones over here. Still working with just that pyro red some brightness on here. Ooh, picked up some blue. That's okay. He can have a stray blue feather over there. Not a big deal. And my color's too close on my palette here. Alright, I'm going to wipe my brush off and go into the vermilion hue which okay, this is that that um, orange color and I'm going to start stroking this in maybe I might still have too much red in my brush this might not show up too well and I'm going to go into that lighter orange which is cadmium orange hue didn't show up quite as well so we'll just put some of this color on here all right wipe my brush off let me get some cat yellow hue out kind of ran out of that Load my brush up with that. It's going to mix with that orange that's in there. And these colors are not getting as bright as I want, so I'm going to wash my brush out and load just yellow. Going from dark to light is harder because you uh, generally have to let each layer dry, which if I can't get this to look like I want, I'm going to let it dry and then come back. <clears throat> and uh, add some of these other colors back in here because I keep picking up the color that I don't want to pick up okay 
I'm going to wipe my brush off and get some white. Mix it in with that yellow. I just want a little bit of this in here. Okay, I washed my brush out. I'm going back to the pyro red. And we're going to finish with this color. down in here of this color on the ends. I'm going to see how I like this. I'm going to step back from it and see how I like it. If I don't like it, I'm going to come in and change those colors. That's that's what's great about when you're painting. If, if you end up putting a color on there you don't like, you have the beauty and the luxury of just painting right over that. really nice for his tail feathers. Gives him a nice shine right through the middle of them. Alright, um, let's go up and paint the eye in. We're going to paint it in with white. We gotta let that eye dry and we're gonna come in and start doing some shading and detail stuff on here. Okay, we've got our eye in here, so I'm gonna take some of that pyro red and a little bit of white. I'm gonna lighten up the red just a little bit. Don't quite want to turn it pink, so if it starts turning pink, get a little bit more of the red and mix it in there. We're gonna outline the eye. You might want to go to a detail liner for this. So just outline the inside of the eye. Okay. I'm going to put a little dot of black in there. Still got some water in there. Wipe my brush out. Oh, I just put my brush through yellow. Okay, I don't want yellow. <laughs> We're going to pick up a little bit of that red on the tip of the brush. Kind of wipe the brush off. We want just a tiny bit of paint. And we're going to kind of speckle in the eye. Wipe it off. I'm going to get a little bit of white and speckle in on top of that. Again, a little bit of red. I want the red to show up a little bit more. A little bit of white. Wipe or brush. Wipe the brush off and go into some white. And just, this is why you might want a detail brush, because with a, a bigger brush you might accidentally get way too much in there. And let me see if I can zoom you in so you can really see what that eye looks like teeny tiny little dots in there. I'm going to redot the black in the eye. And that's just going to finish up the eye there. We'll come back and shade around it later. So now we're going to go to the uh, comb and wattle. So I'm going to get me a uh, 8 flat. And we're going to take that red, that pyro red, and a little bit of black. Darken up that black. 
We don't want it to be black black. We just want it a little bit of a darker red. We don't want it to be quite so bright. And we're going to shade here. Oh, it's really raining outside. My goodness. Go around the, the beak here. I might put just a tiny bit more black in it. I want it to be a little bit darker. Under here. Go around the beak. Go around the eye at least the back of the eye we don't have to go oops we don't have to go around the whole thing but we kind of want to see where that eye is up on the very tippy toe of that brush I think I'm gonna go around the whole eye just a little bit kind of define it a little bit more Put some of this down here, and then I'm gonna put it on each of the comb pieces on the bottom of it. on the bottom or the left left side and we're going to put some shadow here all right let's put some of this on the left side of the waddle Oop, too much black in my mix there far over on my brush. Alright, we're going to go along this edge here with a little bit of this. yelling loud enough I couldn't tell you weren't on camera don't hate me all right let's add some highlights on that so we're going to take our orange with cat orange hue I'm going to start with that color and we'll go on all the opposite sides that we just went on I think I'm going to add a little bit of cat Add yellow hue into that and lighten it up. I want a little bit brighter orange. Too much paint on the tip of my brush. I'm glad I hear the rain out there. We need rain really bad. Right, along up here. We're going to wash over this with some red here in a little bit because we don't want it to be orange, but we want to see those highlights on there. yellow hue and cat orange hue. Those are the two we're mixing. Up here on the top of the head, I need some. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're going to wash over that with some red. 
So we're going to wash over this now with some red. So just take some of your red and bring it over here. I've got water in my brush. I want to make a nice um, watery mix of this so we can just kind of coat all those colors with the red. And bring all that red back out. Pop it back out. Just go over the whole thing. And around this, try not to get into your eye. If you get on your beak, we can touch it up, but we've already painted our eye, so stay out of the eye. Brighten that up quite a bit. I might have to do it a second time, make it really, really bright. We're going to work on the beak and the feet next and get them done so we can do all of our detail shading and detail highlighting. So I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to wash over it one more time with some of that red. Okay, on the beak here, let me zoom you in. We are going to uh, shade it with some burnt umber. So I'm going to side load a little bit of burnt umber. This is a pretty transparent color. We'll go along the back. I think I'll add a tiny little bit of black to it and make it like a soft black. Give it a little bit more depth here. edge of the beak. Okay, down here on the legs. Just brush mix. I'm just using a small chisel brush, uh, six, but um, you use whatever brush you like. So if you're going to use a quarter, uh, an angle brush, I would suggest going down to a quarter or an eighth inch size brush. Shade here and here. And before we do any more shading on the legs, we're going to add some detail on there. So we're going to get our 10 0 liner. And we are going to load some burnt umber. Let's do that mix burnt umber and carbon black get a soft black color. Thin it down with a little bit of water. And then we're going to create some some lines on the legs here. They can be on both sides, above and below each other. All the way down. I'm going to add a little bit more black to the mix because it's a little too transparent for me. So it's got more burnt umber in it than it does black. So add a little bit more black so that we can see these details. Do the other leg. Just 
just little marks. Go back and go over any that you, you know, want them to pop out a little bit more. I still feel like down here on the this one it needs more. Okay, before we add highlights next to those, we're going to go ahead and shade them with the burnt umber and soft black or burnt umber and black mix. Shade down this edge. I'm kind of really up, uh, almost have it straight up and down like this, just slightly turned. I should probably put this on the other side. That one. Alright, so we'll go on the bottom edge of all the feet. More paint. the other one. Carbon black and burnt umber mixed together. A little bit more burnt umber in the mix. Alright, oops, a little bit too much paint there. Go down this edge. And on the left sides of each of the toes here. Forget the little claw here. Okay, now we're going to highlight everything. We're going to first highlight with some cadmium yellow hue. So we'll go back up here to the beak and do it first. color. I might have to tone that down a little bit. Alright, a little bit more back up here on the beak. We're going to let this dry. I'm going to go ahead while it's drying and put the little claws on here with some black using my liner brush Make them a little pointy. 
little pointy claws there. Okay, I'm going to take my detail liner and go into some white. I want to put a little bit of highlight on these areas, mostly on the highlighted side. might not show up too well after we put our next highlight on and it's going to be with white just a little bit well, so a little bit on the very edge up here Just a scooch. That's all you need. And then on the feet. Just a little bit along this edge. Up on the very chisel edge of the brush. You don't want this to be very wide. You're almost lining each one. This one. Just a little bit on those joint areas I think which we can't really tell what's the joint on these but there should be like a joint teeny tiny little bit of paint here I think those look pretty good. Now we've got to do our final shading and then we'll work on our letters. Okay, let's do some fine detail shading on here to make all the areas more defined and pop some other things out. So we're going to use carbon black. And we're going to load this into our brush. Uh, load for a float and um, to load for a float take whatever is your favorite floating brush and put a little bit of paint on one corner of it and work it into your brush to get it a, a soft color just keep it on that one corner don't let it go all the way across your brush work it with some water to get it soft so you've got to have some water in your brush touch your paper towel to your or your brush to your paper towel and then we can start painting so we're going to shade underneath here separate these two legs and we'll go under here we're going to do this in a in out fashion here Right here, we're going to kind of go in and out, kind of push some of that paint up underneath there. Now we're going to go along this breast. We're going to pity pat. We don't want a straight line because we don't want our 
feathers here to become flat. So it's kind of a wiggle jiggle kind of thing. underneath this one not too much just a little wiggle jiggle give it a little bit of shadow we don't want to don't knock down your points because you know that's going to take away from the look we'll go underneath some of these just scoot the very corner of the brush underneath that areas in there. Can pull some of this black up in into these feathers here to give them a little bit more depth. Just a little bit. Don't go crazy. Put a little bit of paint on your brush. Touch your brush to your paper towel. a little bit along this back edge back here. Give it a little bit of a turn look. Okay, I'm going to have to go back underneath this stuff here. This is a little bit too watered down. too far over on my brush so wash it out reload with some carbon black working into my brush with a little bit of water nice smooth touch the tip to my paper towel I'm gonna shade along back here back. Tuck a little bit up there. I think we'll add a little bit more up here. pretty good. Let me wide angle out. Well, not too much. We're going to work on these tail feathers here. So we're going to take some of that black. I want to pick some of these feathers to be more on top, so I'm going to shade under the ones that I want to stand out a little bit more. This is 
that's going to give our tail feathers a little bit more of a personality. So up on the chisel edge of the brush, just pick some out. Which ones are on top? You decide. Once you get started, you can kind of tell which ones are you want to bring forward. Just a little floating is all we're doing. Take it if you if you're putting some feathers definitely on top, take that float all the way all the way to the base of the tail feathers. So it really looks like they're connected in there. It's just a really quick, easy way to define your tail feathers. I think that's pretty good. I think we'll leave it there. We're going to wide angle out so you can see the bird all together. And we've got to do a little bit of shading underneath his feet. So we're going to take that black. We'll have a little bit more black on our brush this time. And we're going to put a little bit of a shadow down here. Maybe not quite that dark because I can't see my toenails. I want to see my toenails. shadow underneath this foot. Make it look like it's lifted up. Well, it is lifted up, but you know that it's got a little shadow under it. I think I'm going to put a little burnt umber in there. Tap it out with my finger. are seen. Okay, I think that's going to finish off our rooster pretty good. So now we're ready to go up and work on our lettering. Okay, right here underneath this wing I feel like needs to be some darker. I will do is take some of that red and stroke a tiny little bit of that over that 
So if I ever paint this again, I might put that black in first so I can One place I didn't put any, and I'm not sure if I want to, but let me see. I'm going to try some burnt umber underneath this one. I really feel like a darker color would be, black would be too much, and I'm not sure I like that burnt umber on there either. I think I'm just going to leave that wing the way it is, because... Okay, lettering, let's do lettering. Okay, before I move to the lettering, I went in with a little bit of white and stroked some across here to bring the highlight back. And right across the chest, I did a few. And right through this wing, a few of the white, just to bring, I just wanna bring some of the highlight back in here. And I think I'm going to put a few strokes of white through here. I really feel like that needs to be just a little bit brighter. Very tippy toe of my brush, barely skimming. Just want to create that super bright highlight right through the middle of these. and the ones that are more forward give them a little bit more white on them This can be something you can do at the end when you get everything done. Let it set for a few minutes and see what you need to go back in and brighten up. Because there's definitely going to be some areas that you're going to see as soon as you step away from it and come back. That's like, oh yeah, that, that could use a little bit more highlight. And then just barely tickle it in there. Don't get heavy handed. do it with this little brush or not but I need a few highlights down here because I used a different brush I think to paint that in but there we go it's looking much much better I think I think I'm gonna leave it there. I think it uh, it looks good. I'll, I'll double check it before I say the project is completed to see if I want to do anything else. But uh, I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, let's go up to the lettering here. Okay, our letters are going to be the uh, rooster is going to be red, the pyrrole red, and it will probably take two coats. So just take your time. Don't rush the lettering. And I think I may create a stencil for this particular design for these lettering. So by the time this comes out, I will have lettering available probably for it on my website. 
So if you're getting this pattern, just look for that. So I just want you to take your time and, and do each letter very, very neatly if you're painting it in by hand because you do not have to buy the stencil. You can just transfer them on and paint them in. It's very good practice when you paint in lettering. It teaches you very good brush control. How to load your brush properly. The right amount of water to have in your brush and your paint to keep it flowing. So I'm just going to go finish all of these letters with two coats. Now these letters down here, we're going to base in. This is not a color we use because down here I just mixed a color. So um, you can mix your, um, your blues and your yellows to get uh, this bright green color. But I'm going to use green gold. Um, I'm going to see how it's going to work. It might be a little bit too transparent. Before it dries, we'll put two coats on here. So on the second coat, we'll come back and I'll show you what I'm going to do. But it's going to be this green, this bright green color. Put some of the water on my brush here. This is a very bright color, but we're going to um, tone it down. Actually, I'm going to tone it down right now because that's too bright. So I'm going to take some of the cobalt teal hue and mix it in there and make this turquoisey blue. And I like that much better. So you can definitely probably mix this with your yellow. So let me see if I can get the color close to that. So we don't have to add another color in here. I'm going to take my um, cadmium yellow hue and my turquoise and mix them. And I definitely can get a color very close to this. So we will just mix those two colors together and base coat these letters in with two coats. I'm using a one round brush, staying up on the tip as much as possible because these are very fine lines, just like when we painted the, the base color in here. Okay, so we'll go all the way around. And when we do the second coat, I'm going to come back and show you what I'm going to do to them while the second coat is still wet. Alright, I'm starting to paint my second coat in here on my cafe. So I'm painting it in with that mix. Cadmium yellow hue, turquoise, uh, cobalt till hue. Okay, I'm going to take my brush and wipe it off and load with just the turquoise on it. I'm going to come and put this on the inside of this letter to give it a two-toned effect. So, repeat that. I'm going to do it while it's wet so it will blend with it a little bit. So it gives it kind of a blue-green look. It's not just all green. And I like that much better. So when we come back and add our shading on here, um, it will look really, really nice. This brush is just too small to um, do a, a double load. So we can't really do a double load with it. some of that green that I mixed up. Not too much water. The good thing is this paint stays wet a little bit longer so that you can 
you know, go over it and blend it a little bit more if you need to. Okay, so all the letters will be done that way. Okay, so I have all my letters painted in, and it's really kind of hard to, to tell that teal on there. I, I did go ahead and add a little bit of these two together, the cerulean blue and the cobalt teal hue, to get just a little bit of uh, a darker teal color to go along there. It's uh, kind of hard to see in the camera, but in front of me I can really see it. So um, you can just paint yours in with like um, the combination mix of these two or with that light green that we made. It's totally up to you. I just kind of wanted a variation of color. So now we're going to use some black to outline and we're just going to use acrylic black paint, what we base coated the background with. We're going to do a drop shadow on the left side of the letters, which is just basically a line. You're just going to line right next to it. Keep your line straight. Consistency in the thickness. Start up here on the O and come down. Stop there. And then we'll go on the inside. I like these letters because they kind of have a old theater, old movie type look. I'm staying mostly up on the tip of this brush. I'm giving a little bit of pressure in the fatter areas, but I'm mostly staying on the tip. is kind of rolled out into a round brush. Okay, that finishes out Rooster. And we'll do the same thing to Cafe. You want a little bit of water in your paint, but then you want the excess water out of your brush. So. Oops. Got a little wobbly eyed there.
smooth out. Alright, here we go. Next letter. Very thin line up here. Get a little bit fatter as we go down because that's a fatter area of the the letter. And I do have a lettering video on my YouTube channel, so if you need some help with some lettering. Alright, he's a pretty handsome rooster if I do say so myself. I'm done with the lettering. I'm not going to do any kind of highlighting or anything on the lettering because I just want the lettering to stand alone as it is. We are going to float around the outside edges. Again, we're going to use just the Deco Art acrylic paint, um, lamp black, and um, a large brush. You can use a flat brush, a filbert brush, an angle brush. You can use a a dampened sponge. I generally use a dampened sponge, but this time I'm going to use a um, angle brush and load some black. I'm using a, a large one, a 5 8 inch, and we want to put this color along our outside edge here. Now, if you can't load your brush well for a wide big float like this, then pre-dampen your area with some water and load your brush. Just don't put as much water in it as you would if you were just trying to paint it on. I'm going to darken all the way around it. of an aged kind of look, kind of around the corners there. We'll let this dry and see if we need to come back and widen it and make it just basically widen it. We shouldn't need to make it any darker, but we might need to widen it. paint to move. If you don't have the water, it's not going to work out very well. That's why if you have a little bit of difficulty with that, it's always good to um, pre-dampen. I can already tell this side, this edge needs to be much darker. bring it in farther too. I just don't, I didn't want it to get onto my lettering. So I'll bring it in a little bit more on the edges. It should dry fairly quickly um, as long as you don't have a gallon of water in your brush. it's mostly water and water does dry quickly as long as it's not you know like swimming in water Oop, got some red on my brush there I want to make sure I don't get that in my paint I think I need a clean paper towel
probably go around the outside edges with a little bit of that uh, cobalt teal hue. I might give it a little bit of a aged look. Well, let me just try it. I might not like it. I'm going to let it mix on my brush with that black. use an angle brush to do stuff with so it's not doing quite what I want it to do. Yeah, I think a little bit of that teal on the corners is going to be nice. up there so I'm going to remove some of it. sure I like that around the edges so I think I'm going to just remove it. Damp brush, water across there, dry paper towel, gently rub. It's not been on, on there long enough to cure. It's not thick enough paint to have cured because it's mostly water. Just leave the black around the edges. I was really hoping that teal would bring in some some aging, but maybe if I just do a hit and miss with it. So I'm going to do just kind of a hit and miss with it because I like it up here where it's just a little bit of teal. Just kind of. Give it a little bit. Maybe bring it into the piece a little bit. Not keep it quite so confined. Oops can find on the edges.
I don't have very much paint in my brush here. And I have pretty much no water in it. And as you can see, as it dries, it's kind of fading down in there, which is excellent. So a little bit of aging around the edges with that. I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I might be ready to call this one a done piece. So let's zoom in here. Maybe not quite so tight. Get a good shot of it. Yeah, that little bit of teal around the outsides. I kind of like that. Okay, I think we're done with this project. My rooster, I love him. His bright colors and this tube, premium tube acrylic paint from Decor was just a wonderful thing to work with. I, I love this paint. It's so creamy and smooth and, and uh, paints on so beautifully. So um, give it a shot if you haven't. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. Give me a thumbs up if you're watching on my YouTube channel and appreciate every one of you. And um, I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.